Hello and welcome. I am George Call, and this is part one of The Lock, part one of a three-part series. Today was blocking. Started with a white canvas, and we covered it with thin value colors. Hopefully, figuring out where the shapes are and putting just kind of a basic, I would call it a mother color. That's what my first teacher called it. In other words, I know there's a lot of detail in each one of these shapes, but that's not necessary right now. Uh, we are uh, exploring uh, impressionistic painting, which is kind of loose. So you start loose from the very beginning. It's not something you do at the end. Um, so, it's important to get outside and paint. Paint with your friends, get critiques, and my job is to introduce to you new paintings every week so that you can be more expert when you go out and find these problems out there and you know what to do in your own studio or when you're plein air painting. Okay, with that, let's get to today's painting. All right, thanks for coming by. Hello, I'm George Call, starting a new three-part series um, up in Rocky Mountain National Park. And uh, let's see, do I have a name for this yet? I do not. So we're going to have to figure out a name for this new three-part series. Last week we did a painting called um, The Lock Outlet. This is The, lo the Lock, L-O-C-H. I think one of the prettiest lakes in the lower 48. It's one of my favorite places in the park and there's a lot to, to paint up there. So uh, that's the subject matter for today. And let's just spend a little time here on the palette. So if you could look at the overhead, you can see that we're gonna concentrate on two blues, two reds, basically these one, two, three, four types of yellow and uh, our um, transparent oxide reds, transparent oxide brown, I have a gray. So let's get a little bit more specific. I have an ultra blue, I have a cobalt, alizarin, cad red, I have a yellow ochre, I have a, uh, let's see, I think that's a, a um, like a cad yellow um, medium, cad yellow light. This is like a lemon. This is transparent oxide red, transparent oxide brown, and cold gray. Titanium white down here. And of course, I always love my student grade Viridian from Winton. I'm using my Gamsol um, uh, mineral spirits. I really think it's, it's a good solvent. And uh, I've got that over here on the right. Now, what I don't have is my razor blade scraper. Okay, I've got that ready, and I will have that handy. I've got my, my palette knives and my brushes over here to the right. All right, I'm gonna get a brush that I wanna make some basic shapes with. So, let's do some mixtures to get started and just figure out, first of all, don't freak out. We're just gonna make out some, some basic shapes. So let's just go blue, gray, blue, gray. That's it. Simple, simple. Now I'm going to get some Gamsol in there. See how thin that is? And I'm going to try to figure out where the lake is. And I'm going to put that a little bit below center. And I know there's some lake that goes above it and back and here somewhere. And I have an island over here, or a, some sort of a, earth coming out on this side. And then we have a bank on this side. That's over here, and then we have trees up in there. Now, it's like we have some darks down in here, basically reflections. And now I want to try to get this big mountain 
in here. So that's the big guy in here. Then there's another one over on this side. Excuse me, I've got to stabilize my canvas. Boy, I didn't do that already. I think I should be ready. And I want to try to get this big mountain over here. And then there's another mountain, very faint. Over here. And then there's a great big glacier over in there. Okay, so this is going to be darker, this will be lighter. And those are my basic shapes. Now, what I encourage you to do is to get one of these little, you know, um, handheld things and figure out. You can draw this on here, you can draw it on here, and get comfortable with where this design should be. My bad habit is I do too much on here and not enough on my sketch pad, but I do recommend you use your sketch pad. All right, so now with this, it looks pretty good. Get back, take a look at it, see if it's working for you. And if that is where would you want everything? Let's go for it. I want to do a little bit more refinement here. Let's see, I think this bank's a little higher. A lot of darks. And we have the lake back here. And I think my islands are too close in size. The one on the right is smaller. So here we're only making corrections, which is good. So I want that to be a little smaller, and I want this to really be a little bigger. So the lake goes back in here, okay. All right, let's change brushes and start working on value colors. Now, being that this is the first part of the painting, we're going to put in thin values thin paint application. We're not putting on globs of paint, we're putting thin, thin stuff. So this uh, number six Rosemary Long Filbert 278, I love this series, it holds a lot of paint and uh, it'll be the next tool I use to work these colors. So let's go back to blue. Let's go to transparent oxide red, blue, transparent oxide red, and just a touch of transparent oxide brown. I need a lot of this, so let me work on it for a second. So I'm going to start over on the left and start working on some of these. Just lightly going in with figuring out where these globs of trees are going to be. And I think there's some bushes along the, the bank here also. Okay, I'm going to go back, so I'm going to add, instead of white, I'm going to add just thin to, to it, maybe a little bit more blue, a little bit of yellow ochre, a little bit of yellow ochre, and I'm going to go back now. Let's go here. A little too thin, I'm going to get some more pigment in it, there we go, just a little bit more. I always find myself, once I get my value color in, that I might still make, might need to make a drawing change. 
And doing the fact that you have a lot of thin paint on here, it's not too hard to make those changes. It gets harder as you add more paint to make shape changes. I'm going to go back to a little bit darker. And I'm going to get some more blue, get some more brown. And I'm going to be doing this stuff in here, getting that reflection in here. Trying to get to the bottom of my canvas. I've got this lip here. Some build up paint. And I gotta scrape that off so it's easier to get down in there. There we go, that's starting to work. And get some edge work done without painting my monitor. All right, so I'm gonna add more turp to this and more blue and a little bit of cobalt. And I added just a little bit of white, which I shouldn't have done. I like to just do it without white because it dries quicker. Hang on one second, let me... I had some buildup on the top of my brush from slopping it on too quick, so I like to just get that off. And now I am... See how this lighter value has Made the painting look like it's going back now. If you're wondering exactly where the lock is, it's up the Glacier Gorge area, Glacier Creek Gorge. I'm going to lighten that up with a paper towel. And I'm going to move this value over. It's really soupy. The reason I like Gamsol, it dries pretty quick. And we can work on top of it a little easier. All right, so let's now go to Ultra and Cobalt. And let's go back here and put in a thin value layer here. Sorry for the background noise. It's Jenny and our guests, our Airbnb guests are saying goodbye. And here we go. And again, I want to try to lighten this up and I'll Get a clean part of my paper towel and do that. All right, so far, I'm going to get back, take a look, see how this is working. Starting to take shape. Darker, lighter, lighter. All right, so now. We have dogs barking now in the background. Okay, I'm going to move this over and try to keep control of my palette here. Every time I get up to the lock, it's just prettier than before. I forget how beautiful it is. 
And it always looks a little different depending on the time of day, the atmospheric conditions. So there's always good stuff to do up there. I put that on a little too sloppy. But still, it's. I want to make this a little lighter. And so that still is saying I'm going back. And it's working pretty good. All right. So now let's get some cobalt. white and get my number six here that I've been using clean out the darker stuff and I'm going to get a little lighter in here now a little bluer and I know there's clouds and things up there but for now that's about all we need A little bit like watercolor now. I think I was a little stingy here with my reflection. Let me get more of it back in there. And I had to make a shape change there, you probably saw that. And that's good enough for now. And I'll clean up this edge just a little bit. And I'm going to lighten this blue too. All right, we're still holding together. What I want to do now is uh, see what I can do about making a warm and a green. So I'm going to go with some transparent oxide red. I'm going to clean this same number six that I've been using. coming up with a warm. So I'm using transparent oxide red and I'm going to use a little bit of cad yellow medium and I'm going to put some of that over into here. More brown. Okay here we go. And that'll work for now. And over here I need a green, so let's add some yellow to this blue I had down here, which was cobalt. And I made some lemon, and I'm going to put this green in here. And then I think there's some brown behind it. So I'll put that in here. And I think I've got some brown in some places back in here. I think I need a shape change here. I think I've got brown up in this area on the left. All right, that completes a very, very thin lock-in. Now I've got a little bit more time left over, so let's get into the next phase. Balance. We're going to work on balance and I'm going to get a little bit more refined on some shapes. So I'm going to pick out some easy shapes such as trees and work on those. This time my mixture is not going to be so thin. So I'm going to go blue, transparent oxide red. A little bit of yellow ochre. Yellow ochre. Yellow ochre. Oop, too much. 
went overboard there. I gotta go back to dark and transparent oxide red. Transparent oxide red. There we go. I think we're coming into the woods really nicely right in here. Oh, that's beautiful. I love mixing colors. All right, I'm going to switch brushes and go to a number eight uh, Rosemary Long Filbert 279. You see me use this a lot at this stage of the painting. Oop, I need more dark. A little bit more. You can tell by the first stroke. Here we go. See, I'm being a little bit more cautious. with my application. Got some taller guys over here. And shorter ones in here. And over here I have kind of a gap in here. The only hard part about getting up to the lock is it's, uh, I think, two and a half miles up here. And it, it is steep at times. And it does, particularly if you're used to lower elevations, it challenges it that way. These darks come down significantly and are kind of have some connection down here along the... Putting a, might need more island, but I'll figure that out tomorrow. So I think I've got some trees in here that <clears throat> can be flushed out more, but excuse me, I got a frog in my throat. <clears> throat. There we go. And let me get these bush things in here, whatever they are. All right, I'm going to put some darker. How am I doing on time? I'm doing great on time. I'm going to go to the other side now and put some trees here. And you can see how by application I'm using the side of the brush for the base as I go up, I get more pointed. And then I can use the side here to kind of do some horizontal strokes. Now, over here I see a bank and I see some trees coming into here. And I think we're going to go to a value change here in just a minute to work on that mountain in the back. You guys are keeping me working. All right, let me clean my brush of this darker pigment. And I'm going to start mixing a lighter pigment with a little bit more blue ultra and some yellow ochre. Yellow ochre, yellow ochre, too much. Get this. Sometimes what I do is just make one big pile, smack it back down again, and take a look at it. And that's looking pretty good. Don't know if I have enough to finish that big hill, so I better make a little bit more. Now on one side of this, I want to go a little darker, so we can do more blue, brown. more blue, more brown, and you'll see here in a second why I'm doing that. Clean my knife. Now, I see some darks in various places, like um, 
just some channels of dark and I'm going to put some of those in. And now I'm going to go to the yellow ochre blue mixture and I'm going to put some of that in. And as you can see I didn't make enough. I mean just a little bit of turp to it, not much. And now you get a little bit of an idea that there's a difference between these trees and the trees behind. And let me do a little bit more work in the tops of these trees here. Right. Since I have this dark here, let's get down into the reflection and work there for a little bit. And I will start making some reflections. Okay. Okay. And Maybe a bit, little bit greener, lighter over here. And a little bit darker over here. And a little bit greener still over in this area. And I'm running out of product. And let's get these darks in here. You know, it's coming along surprisingly well. Nothing's really falling apart yet. And since I have time, let's get up into the mountains. Just a smidgen of that left. I'll leave it over on the left. And I want to switch to a little bit smaller brush. And I'm going to the same series, a, a number six rosemary long filbert 278. And holds a lot of paint. And let's see what we can do with a little bit of gray and a little bit of blue. We got blue, gray, blue, gray, gray. And I'm going to put a little bit of viridian in there because I see it. Okay, I need more gray, more gray, a little bit more green, green, and white. I need a lighter value of this. Boy, you got to be careful with that white. It can really screw things up quickly. I think that's about it for now. And as I put the stroke in, of course, I destroy some of the tops of my trees, but I try to keep my brush clean. And you see, I picked up some contamination when I did that. And I just come back and reload. Well, let's go back even more. And let's add some yellow ochre, I'm sorry, uh, some ultra blue, and a lot more white. Just 
add just a little bit of, and let's see what we can do with these. More white, thinner paint. Max needs to be lighter still. And let me see what I got now. There we go. I know there's all kinds of mountains back there, but let's get decide on one simple value and then we can delineate the different ones as we get more into the painting. That works. And I think I need some of this on, maybe a little bit darker, on this mountain here. All right, let me get back. And let's do some of this, these colors in the water, okay? The reflections seem to be a little bit darker than the mountains that we have up in here. And then let me get a little darker, so let's get some more gray in here. A little bit more blue. And let's go with some darker stuff in the reflection in this particular area here. And I'll put some reflection up in this area too. And I'll put some reflection lighter stuff there. I think we're running out of time and that should do us for part one. Mostly blocking, but then we started getting into a little bit heavier paint. And I'm gonna just thin out this thicker paint that I was pretty sloppy to put that in. So I pick it up and I smash it in there. And I think this stuff is going to do just real good right in here. Love this stuff. All right. Thank you so much for coming by for part one of So Far Unnamed, something to do with the lock in uh, Rocky Mountain National Park. So keep it thin, get your shapes in, and then do some thin value colors. All right. We'll see you in part two. Bye-bye.